<sighs> Howdy, folks. Thanks for tuning in for another cruise of smooth. Tell you what, the mood is uh, <laughs> not great. Before I get into it, uh, again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and notification bell if you want to know when new stuff goes up. Um, I am currently on a two-week rotation of being off work. So, I may not be posting as regularly for the next couple weeks. I know I've been, you know, every, a couple, three, four videos every week, but that might change here <clears throat> over the next two weeks. Again, I'll try to come to you when I can. I know for sure I'm going to be able to get, I should be able to get two videos up this week for sure, but I don't know. So, hold on. I've got another phone holder coming in in the next couple weeks that I'll be able to move between this and another vehicle I've got. So, anyway, uh, well, I guess there ain't no other way to get started but to just get started. Um... protests, the riots, the looting, that's what's on everybody's mind now, nobody's talking about coronavirus, and there's a lot of angles and facets to all this, I've, I've stayed fairly up to speed on all this, reading articles as they come out, um, trying to to be as informed as I can about all this. And I've got an official take on it. Okay, I forget the gentleman's name. I'm terrible with names. You'll have to forgive me. But the gentleman that died in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the hands of law enforcement with a knee to the back of the neck while he's on the ground. Okay, here's my official take on it. <clears throat> Law enforcement need to use the minimum amount of force necessary to control the situation. Period. Now, that might be a lot of force in certain situations. If someone draws a gun and is ready to fire, that could be lethal force in certain situations. But in some situations, it might be simply, sir, please get out of the car, or please take the breathalyzer, you know, whatever the situation is, it could be something very simple. Now, I can't confirm all of this, I can confirm about 90% of what I'm about to say with absolute certainty. <clears throat> And then I'll get into some opinion. The gentleman in question that died um, was attempting to pass off a counterfeit $20 bill, I believe. Or he was attempting to uh, forge a signature on a check. I've heard conflicting reports on that. I'm not positive. Okay. Someone called the police, the police show up, the dude cooperates, the police get him in handcuffs without a fight. Where stories differ a touch is that he was either A, cooperating the whole time, or B, once he was in cuffs, he was starting to resist the idea of being put in a cop car. Okay, I, frankly, if you're going to resist, I don't see the point in doing it once you're in cuffs. The cops have way more control over the situation at that point. I don't know, though. But, if he was resisting arrest at that point, I can understand the cop getting him into a controlled position. 
position <clears throat> where the cop's not going to have to apply force and he can just let the guy sit there. Like, okay, if he would have got him face down, cuffed behind his back, unless that guy is in the top 1% of physical fitness or flexibility, that guy ain't getting up on his own. And even if he was, all the cop's going to have to do is stand and put one foot right above his butt. And he, that guy ain't getting up. <clears throat> so, I don't so even if the guy was resisting arrest and he wanted to put him down there so that everybody could calm down a little bit, maybe get another cop over there to help get him into the car, that's all that would have been necessary in that situation. My opinion on that cop, Mr. Chauvin, if I'm saying his name right, he is a sadist. He's got a long history of abusing his authority and uh, acts of police brutality. So, I am not on his side very much through all this. So, I, I tend to, to side with the victim in all this, even though it, he died tragically. I think that no crime that was alleged that day, you know, trying to pass off a counterfeit 20, uh, uh, forged check or resisting arrest. It didn't deserve death and it definitely didn't deserve it that way. So that's where I come down on all this. Now, I've been hearing lots of things uh, about all this. Um, a buddy of mine is very much a, well, co-worker, is very much a apologist for the worst behavior in these demonstrations. He has made excuses for the target that got looted and destroyed. He's made excuses for the auto zone that got burned down. He's made excuses for the businesses. Uh, saying things basically that um, all that stuff is insured. Are you valuing that more than one man's life? And there's a Venn diagram that I saw the other day where I can say that his murder is wrong, the police, they're good cops, and I'm, con I'm anti-riot. All at the same time, I'm right in the center of all that. You know, a couple episodes back, I was going over all my encounters with police, and by and large, <clears throat> I've dealt with more good cops than bad cops, and that's and that's counting the the incidences where I was in the wrong due to my right foot. That's not counting incidences where. Um, I called the police for a reason, or I dealt with cops at a DUI checkpoint, or I dealt with police at a an event. Uh, dealt there was a cop that I used to know that was a bouncer at a bar I used to frequent. Things like that. So that's not counting all those. That's just counting the times I got pulled over and was what was this guy doing wrong kind of thing. So, I definitely think there's a lot more good cops out there than bad cops. I think that the biggest thing that has hurt law enforcement's credibility in recent years would be police unions. I work in a union shop. I know how hard it is to get into serious disciplinary trouble there. You kind of got to be trying. So if public sector unions or anything like that 
I don't particularly think that even if this cop is a is a genuinely bad that if a cop is genuinely a bad cop, I don't think it's going to be easy for them to get into trouble, get true disciplinary measures taken from them or taken against them, because paid absence during an investigation that's not discipline. That's them getting the cop out of the limelight. But a paid disciplinary leave that's a joke. That is a paid, that is an unscheduled paid vacation. That is what that is. So, I would blame police unions for a lot of that because if you end up making a decision that draws you into the limelight, the second you do, your union dues kick into effect and everybody and all your union representation and whatnot comes into play and they hold the police department's feet to the fire on the contract and well diddy 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 and so if there's not a hundred percent can conduce it or a conclusive proof they can get you off on a lot of stuff and i've seen that happen at my job working in a union shop i've seen people get away with all sorts of stuff because the union goes to bat for them not saying that unions are all bad but I don't particularly like public sector unions because you're paying taxes for a public good that is corrupted by union officials so that's why I think that the police forces are losing credibility if I had to pick one thing that's making them lose their credibility it's their police union second there was another protest in my city there was a free not in my city in my state um, I live quite a ways away from here from there I believe the woman's name is Brianna Taylor Louisville Kentucky she uh, her and her boyfriend were at home one night. The police executed a no-knock warrant. I have my own opinion on those. Unconstitutional. Change my mind. Kentucky has a law, castle law, when someone breaks into your house, you have the right to defend your life with lethal force and stand your ground within your house. Door gets kicked in. Boyfriend goes out shooting. Wings a cop. Uh, another cop was outside of the house and he was shooting through the walls blindly inside the house, hit her and killed her. There was a protest in Louisville over that. Here's where I start to take issue with the protests. <clears throat> um, that the night of one of these protests, I had to go to the downtown Louisville area, which is where all this was, and I was there for a few hours with my wife and one of my kids. As we're getting ready to leave, I've got a family member who works as part of the Metro Emergency Services, and she's saying, you need to stay put, stay where you're at, riots are close, okay. So we're a little concerned when we're getting ready to leave and we end up, there was a police officer right there who was wearing his radio and very up to speed. There was news on the protesters were trying to overturn an ambulance on live TV and I asked the cop if we could leave, he's like, yeah, you're good. Which way you headed? I told him I'm getting on the interstate heading out of here. He's like, you'll be fine. Just take these roads. But I was still...